QuickBooks Online 2024, creating sub accounts and categories for fixed assets, otherwise known as property, plant, and equipment, PP and E. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to get the books on key with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports, they're on the left. We're in the favorites. We're right clicking on that balance sheet to open link in a new tab. Right clicking on the PL, the profit and loss to open the link in a new tab. Repeating the process for the trustee trial balance. Then we'll tab to the right, close up the hamburger, change the range working in the first two months of Jan of 2024. That's from 010124 tab 022824. We'd like to see the first, first two months side by side. So we'll select the months, run the report, tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger. The range ins, they are changing. We're going from 010124 tab, 022824 tab. Once again, selecting months so we can see the side by side, tabbing to the right, repeating the process, hamburger closed. And the times, they are a change in 010124 tab, 022824 tab. Are they changing for the better? Uh, n no, I don't think so. But we can always hope. Let's hit the months here. We're going to run that report. And then we're going to tab back to the balance sheet over here. Discuss the new process that we're looking at. We're looking at the property, plant, and equipment down here. Otherwise known as the PP and E called the fixed assets for the account category in QuickBooks might sometimes be called depreciable assets. As we discussed before, the fixed assets is an accrual type of account, meaning even if you're on a cash based system, you can't really get away from doing the accrual component when you're looking at something that is as extreme as property, plant and equipment. The classic example being like a building because when you buy a building, even if you paid cash for it, uh, you, you tend to think, well, I'm not just going to expense the building. We're not just going to have building expense for $100,000, even if we paid cash for it, because we instinctively know that if I tried to compare this year to next year, when, when I expense the entire building, it wouldn't be a good comparison of actual performance of the business. That's why we have the accrual kind of process. So we would say, okay, we're going to put the build. The building is an asset, even though I paid for it, like I paid for supplies and the supplies I would put on the books as supplies expense. And why is that? Because the building is going to, is going to be an investment. It's going to be benefiting not just one period, but multiple periods into the future. And even if we wanted to expense it just for ease, because it is the easier thing to do, we can't really, because the tax code, at least in the United States forces us to put it on the books. Uh, as an asset. We also want to track it in a similar way as we do with the inventory. Inventory is typically something that can more easily be stolen. We're more worried about people stealing our guitars and whatnot than our sofas or the actual building that the guitars are in. However, uh, we still want a list of those assets because people, they're getting quite bold these days, right? They might just go into our, 
our warehouse and drive out the forklift or something and just drive it down the freeway for all you know wouldn't be surprised these days you know so so we want to be able to track our fixed assets uh, as well and have a list of what those fixed assets are in a similar way as we want to have with our inventory because those are their assets right they're things that we're holding on to that are going to help us to generate revenue uh, in the future. Now, you would think then that there would be a sub ledger within QuickBooks to do that, but generally that might not always be the case because the calculation of depreciation is quite complex. So it seems uh, not very efficient to try to have two sub ledgers, one in QuickBooks and one in the tax return. And because the tax software is mandatory to have depreciation calculated in the United States on a tax basis, Oftentimes, many small to mid-sized businesses will just simply use the tax software to calculate the tax depreciation and either use that tax depreciation as their books depreciation as well, even though it's not ideal to do so from a bookkeeping standpoint, because, but it's the easy thing to do because then you don't need two depreciation schedules, one for tax, one for books, or you can use the tax software to also calculate the book depreciation as well as the tax depreciation. Whatever method you use in that, however, then you have a question of, well, how am I gonna group my accounts in my QuickBooks software? And I would suggest you probably want to group it in the same format as the categories in the tax software because that's where your sub ledger will be supporting the actual things that you have on the books and the related accumulated depreciation. So you might work with your accountant or tax preparer and say, well, what are the major categories that you have in the tax software? And typically it's like furniture and fixture, machinery and equipment and so on. These categories being geared to the useful lives typically provided by tax law. That's what the grouping is usually kind of designed around. And so we're going to say, let's group our stuff in the same format so that when I get the sub ledger, I can look at the grouping of furniture and fixtures and the grouping of machinery and equipment. There would be automobiles, building typically, and have those same categories tie into my totals here for furniture and equipment uh, and so and furniture and fixture and then the equipment and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to imagine, look, we have everything in this one thing for furniture and equipment, but my sub ledger in the tax software breaks out furniture and fixture versus equipment in a separate category. It would be easier for me to tie out my books to the sub ledger if I mirror the sub ledger in our, in our side. So what we want, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say that the last purchase that we made was for $5,000, which was actually for machinery and equipment, whereas the rest of it is actually furniture. And I would like to break those two things out into their own categories. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to go to the first tab, think about how we might do that. We'll go into our transactions, and then I'm in the chart of accounts on the right-hand side. Let's close up the hamburger, and then I'll scroll down. We're looking for the fixed asset type of accounts. Now, QuickBooks give, gave us, we already deleted, I think, some of them. They gave us a whole lot of fixed asset accounts and sub accounts and whatnot, and they have their rationale for doing that, I think, to try to give us an idea of what might fall into fixed assets, but that's probably not the best way to actually group your fixed assets because again, you wanna group it in the same way as the sub ledger will be. So you wanna work with the tax software if that's gonna be your sub ledger. And so just be aware of that. You, you might have to clean up the, the accounts. Whereas if I, for example, if I go down to the, to the expenses, QuickBooks also gave us a massive list of expenses, but at least the expenses, if you use their accounts, that should work because the income statement will have the expenses on the tax return and you should be okay. With the furniture and fixture, it's gonna end up being a mess if, if you're using this for taxes and you do not tie out your furniture and fixtures to what's on the tax return, because then when you try to calculate your depreciation and when you try to sell furniture and equipment or dispose of it, you're gonna run into, like I say, a mess. So this is one of those things where I'm trying to find, where like, you might not think it's a big deal for the first few years, but then you get five years into it and then you and then you realize that you need to sell or dispose of something and it's like, and then it's a mess. Okay, so you want to get it right the first time. This is one of those things, measure twice, cut once, what rather than tinkering. 
Okay, so I've that's my spiel. So I'm gonna change the name of this one to furniture and fixture instead of furniture and equipment. Drop down, edit, and it's gonna be called, I'm gonna call it furniture and fixture. Fixture, because that's the category that's in my subletter. Subledger, fixture, fixtures. I think it has an S, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's save that. And then, so now I have that. Now I'm gonna make another one called just equipment. So I'm gonna make another one that's just called machinery and equipment. Machinery and equipment. That's another category, so I'll just mirror that. Let's make a new one. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be do, 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 an asset account. It's gonna be a fixed asset, property, plant, and equipment. And I'm gonna call it uh, machine, I'll call it, it's a fixed asset, and they've got all these categories for the fixed assets here. There's machinery and equipment, and then I'm just going to call it machinery and equipment. So then we'll say save it. So, and I'm not so worried about the tax categorizations because I haven't found that the software is really great at just pulling into the tax software and everything just working beautifully. You still have to do data input into the tax software. I'll keep testing it and see if I get to a point where I think that works good. But these are our two accounts. Now, what I have here is everything on the balance sheet is in this furniture and fixture. I'm gonna say that the 5,000 that we purchased last time was for machinery and equipment. So I could go into this account and I could change the actual transaction. I could drill down on this journal entry and change the account. But I'd like to keep the audit trail, which is typically the case, and then make another journal entry to break it out to the proper balance. So I'm gonna use a journal entry to do that, but because there's only two accounts impacted, it's probably easier, or we can just use the registers to do that. So what I wanna do if, over here is I wanna move 5,000 of it uh, into machinery and equipment from furniture and fixture. These are both balance sheet accounts, therefore both have registers. I'm gonna use the machinery and equipment one because that's the e increase. So maybe it would be easier to think about the increase. So I'm gonna view the register, select the drop down. I wanna make a journal entry and we'll make it just as of the end of February 02, 2824. And we're gonna say that this is going to be to break out fixed assets in accounts that match sub ledger on tax software or something like that. It's gonna be an increase of 5,000. The other side's gonna go into furniture and fixture. So this should just be a journal entry. And this is a journal entry because we're, there's no other form to do this, obviously. We, there's, there's no normal form for, for recategorizing your fixed assets because that's not something that happens in the normal process. Therefore, we default to a journal entry, but instead of just entering a journal entry, it might be easier to use the journal entry form with the registers as we're doing here. All right, let's save it. And then boom, it's been done. Let's go to the balance sheet and check it out. I'm gonna run it again, run it. And then so now, we can see that we have 5,000 in the machinery and equipment, 98,000 in uh, the furniture and fixture, and it went into this account with the use of a journal form. If I go into the journal form, it doesn't take me to the register, but it takes me to a journal entry with the debits and the credits. I might copy the memo on both sides here. So it's on either side that you care to look at. And then let's go back. Okay, so now in my sub ledger, I can double check that I can be like, okay, does that make sense has sense been made? I think I have made sense. Because I took my dollar bill and exchanged it for pennies. I don't I've made sense from okay, I don't need a calculator because that adds up to 98,000 right here and 5000 for my machinery and equipment and furniture and fixture. So boom, 98 and five, that looks good. We don't have to do anything to the accumulated depreciation as of yet in terms of the dollar amount because we've only had accumulated depreciation on the 98,000 furniture and fixture, not yet on the machinery and equipment. But if there was stuff in the, in the furniture and equipment or the accumulated depreciation for these accounts, then 
you'd have to think about how you're going to deal with it. Now, th now we have to deal with this account, however. So now we've got the accumulated depreciation. Notice over here, what happens is we get each list of each item in the subledger, which has its own calculation of depreciation because they were purchased at different points in time. And then we get the total accumulated depreciation per category. So this is the current month, but we, we currently have 7,500 before the current period. So, so, th and then, so then, and then we have the same for down here. So then the question is, well, I could over here, the easiest thing to do is I just have one accumulated depreciation account for all categories, but it might be better if we had just like mirror this. So we have an accumulated depreciation for each category so that I can see both the purchase price, the cost and the related accumulated depreciation, the expensing of it, the decrease in the value uh, or the allocation of the cost to get also the book value per category. So to do that, I can use subledgers to kind of to kind of do that. So let's let's do that method. So I'm going to go back on over here and I'm going to go back. Let's open up the hand boogie. Let's go into our chart of accounts again. And I'm going to say, let's first make this accumulated depreciation. I'm looking for the fixed assets. I'm looking, I'm looking, I went too far, I think. Uh, okay, assets. And where are the fixed assets? Don't day for crying out loud a star. There they are. Okay, so now we're going to say that we have uh, the accumulated depreciation. So let's let's make this one a sub account. Now, now here's the question here, we could make one parent account for furniture and fixture, and then have the sub account for the cost, and then have the accumulated depreciation as under each of them, so that the parent account doesn't have anything in it. But we can try to kind of shortcut that I can try to say, well, I'm just going to use the furniture and fixture uh, as the parent account, even though there's something posted to it, and then add the accumulated depreciation as the sub account. So let's try that and see what it looks like. So we're going to say edit this one. And we're going to say that this is going to be so then I, I also often will abbreviate this, which is kind of ugly, but accumulated depreciation is so long that it's easier to just say like a Q ACC Depre and then uh, fixed assets. Now, some would argue you don't even need to say accumulated depreciation if you make it a sub account of the of the other fixed asset account. But I like to have it in there because it's easier for me to do the journal entries. Otherwise, you've got multiple accounts with the same name that just are called accumulated depreciation, which isn't helpful. And you're going to have to change the name anyways, because QuickBooks won't let you have two accounts with the same name. But we're going to put it under furniture and fixture. So there it is. And let's check that out. So let's save that and change in the type. Okay, that's okay. Uh, boom, and see if I can find it now. It took me back to the right place this time. That's good. So now it's a sub account. Let's take a look at it on the balance sheet. So if I run it, so now we can see it works out pretty nice this way, because then the parent account also notice that if I made a separate sub account, called furniture and fixture and then i made two if i made a separate parent account called furniture and fixture and then two accounts underneath it called accumulated depreciation and cost then the accumulated depreciation ends up being on top of the cost due to the fact of alphabetical order right so this way actually works pretty nice because now the furniture and fixture is on top right? even though the, the the accumulated depreciation starts with an a so we have this and, and you also eliminate one extra line. Otherwise, there would be one extra line. So you're, you're also making your financials a little bit shorter doing that. So this is the cost. This is the accumulated depreciation for it. And this is the book value, which is great. So I'm going to do the same format for the machinery and equipment, although there is no accumulated depreciation yet posted, but we will have it when we do the adjusting entries in a future course or section. So let's get ready for that now. So I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, the machinery and equipment. Don't day for the 
Dios for crying out loud, Mios. This is my Spanglish. It's half Spanish, half English. Dios Mios. Dios for crying out loud, Mios. I, okay. I'm going to make another. So what I'll do here is I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to say this is going to be uh, a, uh, a fixed asset type of account. So it's an asset. And then we're going to make it under the fixed assets, under machinery and equipment. And so I'm going to call it machinery and equipment, dude. And then we're going to say here, I'm just going to say ACC pre machinery and equipment. I just think it sounds cool too. ACC pre sounds better than accumulated depreciation. It's the ACC pre. That's what we're talking about here. Let's run it. And so there we have it. And so if I scroll down, we've got the furniture and equipment and then these subcategories there as well. So that's going to be the general idea. If I go back to the balance sheet, we run it again. Then we've got these nice subcategories. Nothing new happened here because there's nothing in the subcategory yet. But when I post to it, as we will do in a future course or section in the adjusting entries, then we'll have this drop down for each of them. So now I'll be able to show total fixed assets and then each fixed asset category in terms of the cost as well as the accumulated depreciation and the book value per category, or I can collapse each category showing just the book value uh, per category. So pretty fancy uh, on that. So that looks good. All right. And we'll also when we do that, we'll we'll do we'll do our adjusting entry with this form over here. Okay, let's see where we stand in our trial balance. Let's go to the trustee TB run it. We haven't done much new except for that one recategorization of the fixed assets. If your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, try doing a date range change and see if that is the issue. We've got the balance sheet on top of the income statement, starting with the assets. These are all assets, cash, <coughs> accounts receivable, inventory, investment, payments to deposit, prepaid insurance, the fixed assets, the accumulated depreciation, contra asset tied intimately to the fixed asset. We basically took the fixed asset account and broke it into two halves. So these, that's why we get a contra account because it's part of another account. It doesn't really stand on its own leg. It's, it's just one leg or the other. Anyway, machinery. And then we have those are what the, the company has in terms of dollars, not in terms of units. Then we have the other side of the coin. Who has claim to the to value of the assets? We have then the liabilities and the equity. First liabilities, like the accounts payable, the visa, the state with the sales tax, the government with, I mean, sorry, the bank with the loans, and then the government again with the payroll taxes, and then unearned revenue. If we got some kind of deposit that we have not yet earned, and then our portion as owners, owner's equity, such as the investment, similar to the capital, or I'm sorry, common stock, if we were a corporation, and then the owner's equity, similar to retained earnings, and then the whole income statement, giving us detail about one year uh, of information, typically for QuickBooks. And if we take the credits, which are income, minus the debits, which are expenses, we should get a net credit balance, net income, that could be thought of as part of the owner's equity, or retained earnings if a corporation, QuickBooks doing that closing process for us on a yearly basis, we can see if we bring it up one more year, 010125, 010125, run it. The whole income statement gets smushed together in owner's equity, the odometer of the income statement being reset at zero for the next trip starting in the next year, all income accounts, the temporary accounts of income accounts, then resetting starting over owner's equity, similar to the retained earnings representing the odometer that's not being reset because it is the total distance that has been tracked in terms of one lump sum number over the life of the corporation, net income over the life of the corporation less the amount that has been distributed out in the form of draws if a sole proprietorship, dividends if it was a corporation.